Hey, it's Jessie. This spring, as schools everywhere closed, high school musicals got called off. Lots of teens who'd been practicing for that big debut never got the chance to perform. And a musical for a high schooler can be so much more than a performance. I know, it was so critical for me. For many teens, it's a community, a place where you fit in, a place where you can be seen for your talents. That's what Laura Benanti was thinking too. Laura's a Broadway star, and you've probably seen her on TV shows like Nashville. In the middle of March, she went out on her porch and tweeted a video message. If you would like to sing a song that you are not going to get to sing now and tag me, I want to see you. I want to hear it. Thousands of theater students responded. So I called Laura. A tiny bit of our conversation will be on next week's episode, but here's the whole thing. My mom is a voice teacher, and she has a lot of young people as students, and she really cares about them tremendously. And she was just saying how brokenhearted she is for them and how sad that they aren't going to be able to participate in their musicals, and especially like her seniors, where this was going to be their last show. And I was thinking about how meaningful my school show was to me, how it was really like the one time a year that I felt seen by my community, you know, where I felt like they were looking at me going like, wow, she's really talented. You know, I wasn't as invisible as I felt. And, you know, for this generation that self-identifies as more anxious than any previous generation, I can't imagine what this moment is for them because I'm like a 40-year-old woman with a lot of therapy under my belt and some pretty great coping skills, and I feel crazy. So I can't imagine being a young person. And then to also have taken out from under you perhaps the one like super safe space that you feel, I just felt genuinely like worried about these kids and what that was going to do to their mental health and their emotions. And um, so I thought, you know what, if I can provide any relief by letting them know that their hard work wasn't for naught, you know, if that if I can be their audience, perhaps it'll cheer them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I thought I'd get like 20 responses or something. And now it's like almost 5,000 videos that have been sent in. And the, the my original post has been seen like almost 4 million times. It clearly struck a chord. Clearly it struck a chord. So, so what did you ask specifically? You asked that if you were going to perform and you are now not going to get to, what should people do? I Well, I said that they should, um, you know, post a video of themselves or any rehearsal footage or anything that they may have had and tag sunshine songs. But it's grown so far beyond just kids who are disappointed about their musical. Now it's become like parents and their kids singing and dancing together and, you know, kids in college and like four-year-olds. And it's really expanded beyond even my original intention, which is so fantastic. And now my friend Kate Dieter Meriday, she's um, a mediator down South. She and I um, are partnering with an organization called K4. We're going to um, sort of curate uh, these videos into like 30 minute virtual variety shows, which can then be sent to senior living centers, hospitals, and to any isolated person or anyone, frankly, who would like access to these songs, but doesn't have social media. So, you know, I asked for people to please email us their submissions to the sunshine concert at gmail.com. Um, so you can either submit a video there with the understanding that it will be, you know, sent to hospitals, senior centers, etc. Or you can request it. So if you are a hospital worker or if you work at a senior center or if you know someone who's isolated, you can request on their behalf. And what it'll be is basically an e-newsletter. So as long as they have email and can click a link, they're good. Um, and this is 100% a charitable endeavor. No one's making money off of this. This is just purely, you know, to bring some joy to people who like aren't on Instagram and Twitter. Laura, that is, it's so cool. It kind of gives me shivers. Um, What are you seeing a lot of? What are the popular hits this season? (laughs) The biggest hit, I would say, is Waitress. People have sent in some, like, vanilla ice cream and stuff, which is a song that I sang in a show called She Loves Me. Um, And I could have danced all night from My Fair Lady. So that's pretty awesome. It's been pretty varied, I I will say. Um, 
Oh, I've seen a lot of Suzical. I feel like that's something that, that is happening in high schools. I saw one company of Chicago and they looked incredible. I will say the thing that I'm so gratified about, one of the many things, is that it hasn't turned into a competition. It's just this community, this community of young artists that have come together to cheer people up and to share their own talents. And I really just love that it hasn't become like an awards ceremony. (laughs) Yeah, that's actually pretty amazing now that you say that. And also, I've not seen one negative comment on on any of the uh, the posts. That's, for me, for the internet, that's remarkable. That's... There's only positive comments. Maybe you're on a different internet than the rest of us. Or maybe we're all moving to that internet. Maybe that's what this pandemic is doing to us. I hope so. Um, Laura, it made me think a lot about the value of audience and and what it means to share your art. And what it means Mm. when you, like, what the difference is between performing in your living room and performing in your living room and knowing that one other person is observing Mm -hmm. your performance. Curious what you think about that. I feel like we all want to be seen. You know, I I feel like it's, it's why we fall in love. You know, I think we want to be seen for who we truly are. So... The difference between singing to yourself in the mirror and singing knowing that there will be a person on the other end looking at you is that it's an opportunity for connection. Certainly we can and should connect with ourselves. That's like the most important connection. But from there, I really do think that we want to see people and we want to be seen by them. You know, it's a pretty like basic human instinct, I think. So when this first happens... And my friends, a lot of my peers were at home with small kids, jobs and things that were canceled. You know, I'd get in touch with them and I'd feel so badly because the things that I do to make my friends feel better weren't working. Right. I couldn't go over and take their kids for an hour. Yeah. Couldn't bring them a beer. Couldn't do those things. Um, But I had this sort of powerful turning point myself when I realized that actually just listening was the thing that we could do. And this makes me think about that. Yep. I think that just sort of being present in with someone is like the greatest gift we can give them. For me, I think the most yeah. like, generous thing Entirely. someone can say is I see you and to mean it. <laughs> yeah. Th- this idea of packaging it and making it available in a more formalized way. Does this begin to, like, is it a, is it a, Is it a solve for the lack of performance? I don't think it's a a, like a like a full solve. And a lot of these senior centers have like TV stations. And so if, you know, they can run 30 minutes of young people singing beautifully, like how I just don't see how that could be harmful in any way. I feel like it could be really, really helpful in feeling a sense of connectivity. So I I worry about isolated seniors and, you know, obviously like pediatric units, kids in hospitals. Um, And then anyone else who happens to be isolated, who isn't on Twitter and Instagram, which is a lot of people. My friend Kate and I were talking about like, what can we do to be of service? This is a way that I can be of service. Um, I don't think that digital performance can ever replace live performance. I just... It's like our most ancient art form. You know, it's we've been passing stories down from generation to generation since, you know, we started walking on two legs. And so for me, theater will always be sort of um, ancient in that way, in in a way that feels like necessary. Um, But I think during this time that is just a global emergency, I think we're seeing this desire for interconnection. And I think the best way we can facilitate that right now is using the tools that we have, you know, the Internet. Um, I like this idea of being of service, too, because I think yeah. uh, this is coming only from my own head. But I, I just have this gut sense that the way that we feel less lonely and the way that we feel connected is by acting in service to each other. And so I 100 percent agree. Yep. It's what we have. It's what we can do. And when you 
give somebody the opportunity to be an audience, maybe you're giving them as much as when you give them the opportunity to perform. I think that's true. I think that's absolutely true because I feel that participation when I'm, you know, in a, in a live theater with the audience, like they are just as important as we are. Um, you really can't have one without the other. So I completely agree. It's a symbiotic relationship in the most beautiful way. Well, that's interesting. So wh- what, does, what does the audience feel like when you're performing and say, you know, a show on Broadway? Like another character, you know, they may not be on stage, but they're the other character in the show. And their response or lack of response or the way that they are listening as a group changes what happens on stage. You know, they're such a a vital, essential piece. It's what I miss about doing television and film. You know, you don't you don't get that. um, You don't get that interaction. Yeah. In the way that you do in theater. Yeah, I totally hear you. On social, one of the things that makes social work is that when people have a absorbed a performance they can they can react to it and they can share that reaction back is there Mm -hmm. is there some way to do that with the the larger format I think in terms of this sort of public service that the people who you know who are submitting their performances to our email address that public service I think is is just putting it out there knowing that it's going to cheer some people who really need it yeah and that it definitely will I'm really inspired by what Laura is doing with Sunshine Songs. Of course, she also had a number of her own projects coming out this spring. So I have an album coming out in June um, that was always meant to come out in June. And I have a single coming out April 14th that was always meant to come out. And this is a very weird time, I think. Weird and sort of helpful to be creating content during this time because I think there's a real need for it, but there's also something strange about it's also something strange about it for me at least. So, what was the plan for releasing the single and the album before the pandemic, and how is this going to change what you do? Well, I'm not going to be able to tour to support it yeah. until you know who knows when. So that's the biggest piece. Um, but for me. You know, asking people to buy anything right now feels kind of creepy. Yeah. Um, Which is why I'm donating um, all of the proceeds, all of my proceeds from the single to Food Corps. Um, Then they're working to make sure that kids who um, rely on school for the majority of their nutrition are still being fed. Um, So... That's changed. You know, I would have just dropped the single and that would be that. And I would have made, you know, like a professional music video and, hope you know, be doing all of the, you know, going on all the talk shows and stuff. Yeah. But now, you know, I'm putting out the single, but I'm donating the proceeds. I'm putting together a music video, but it's it's like an at home style music video featuring how we're sort of dealing with all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to be able to tour, but... You know, it's been tricky. I, I was, like, supposed to be shooting a pilot right now. I'm on that show Younger. Yeah. I was supposed to do another another television job in the summer. All of my concerts have been rescheduled for later in the year. Um, my friend Kate and I have a book still that's coming out um, called M is for Mama and also Merlot. That's a board <laughs> book, like a comedic board book for moms. I think I could use that so, one. So, <laughs> um it's actually, you know, that's something that I'm happy to be telling people about right now because look, Mother's Day is still happening. People are still having babies and more than ever, we needed a good, uh, we need a good laugh. So that's really true. It's available for pre-order now. And then, um, you know, but yeah, it's just really, it's a really tricky time. So I'm, I'm really just like you said, just trying to be of service right now as much as I can. Laura, that's so many creative things that you had up in the air, things that you were in the process of creating that you've had to put a pause on, things that you plan to release in the world that are going to be released differently. How how has the arc of your feelings been about that? I'm pretty, I think like everyone, uh, disappointed and scared. You know, I really would like for these um, television jobs to happen because I really love all of them. I'd love to be able to do my concerts because I love to perform and also it's how I make my living. 
Um, it's pretty scary to have zero income for the foreseeable future. You know, everything just feels more precarious. But when I lean into like the light of it all, I try to remind myself that this is actively working my, um, like my uh, mindfulness practice. So being mindful and present is a, is a challenge and this is a time to practice that. Mm -hmm. Do you have things that you do every day to feel okay right now? I've been exercising every day um, in some capacity, even if it's just dancing with my toddler um, and trying to meditate every day. And then I've been going to bed like super early. Like basically when my daughter goes to bed, I go to bed because she gets up really early and I find that I'm needing more sleep right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's to process like this feeling of grief, you know, and fear. So I'm really just trying to be easy on myself. Uh, yeah, I've been going to bed similarly, like as soon as my kid is asleep and waking up yeah. early in the morning as a result. And that hour yeah. before my kid wakes up, it's like a magic hour. It's the hour when everything feels yes. possible, you know? Yes. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing for me is I wake up in the morning feeling a sense of like, woof, here we go. It's like it's pushing a boulder up a hill. Yeah. I don't watch the news anymore. It makes me too angry. So I've just been going on the World Health Organization site like in the morning and at night to see if there's any inf new information that I need to keep me and my immediate area safe. And other than that, I'm just not reading the news. I mean, that's a really smart self-care technique right now. Laura, it was, so, it was such a pleasure to talk to you. I, I really love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Let me know how I can support Thank like you. anything that I can do to amplify your work. And I'm also very excited for your creative work this spring. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. That was Laura Benanti. All those creative projects we touched on earlier, well, I asked her to list them so we can check them all out. Yes. Um, so the name of my album will be self-titled, Laura Benanti. The, the first single is a cover of Sucker, S-U-C-K-E-R. Um, the name of my book is M is for Mama and also Merlot. Um, you can get it on Amazon. And for my album and the single, you'll be able to get it on iTunes. Um, and then, oh, where you can submit the, the sunshine concert at gmail.com. So you can email us with your submission with an email title, sun, sunshine submission. And um, you can email the sunshine concert at gmail.com with the title request sunshine. If you, um, if you want to receive the concerts. Thanks, Laura. We're rooting for you. Special thanks to Sarah Storm for producing this bonus episode. I'm Jesse Hempel. Keep your masks on and your hands washed, and I'll see you on Monday.